Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's your friendly neighborhood root beer here, and we're going to be starting off part C of our format paper with question number 21. At Matilda's birthday party, the ratio of people who ate ice cream to people who ate cake was 3 to 2. People who ate both ice cream and cake were included in both categories. Okay, so they were counted twice. If 120 people were at the party, what is the maximum number of people who could have eaten both ice cream and cake? Hmm. Maximum number of people. Because I suppose we could have, you know, three people who ate ice cream, two people who ate cake, and 115 people who didn't have anything. So we sort of want to maximize our amounts. All right, all right. Uh, what could we do here? We want the maximum number. Um, hmm. What could we say? Well, uh, I think I think it's safe to say that if we uh, maximize our number of cake and ice cream eaters, one of the ways we can do that is to minimize this isn't the this isn't going to give us a complete answer but I still want the the smallest number of people so we want to minimize the non cake and ice cream eaters the people who ate neither not neighbor neither Okay, so um, I'll start the question off probably by assuming that everyone at least had a cake or ice cream. Some people obviously having both. Now, the numbers might not work out. Because we've got a ratio of 3 to 2, I'm thinking that the fact that 120 is divisible by 3s, 4s, 5s means the numbers are probably going to work out and that there's a way to make it so everyone had at least a cake or an ice cream. But if it were, the numbers were something like 121, I could very easily see, because you can't have like a half of a person eat a cake, that uh, if the numbers were something like 121, things wouldn't work out and there'd be one person who sort of, at least one person who sort of has to have neither. That's what I'm thinking at least. Okay. Um, so I want to make the, the, the number of people who had cake and ice cream as big as possible. Now, um, I've not, I think it'd be, I, I need to set up an equation, at least one equation, I think. So I'm going to say, um, is it ice cream to cake? Ice cream to cake. So I'm going to let C equal the number who ate cake and B the number who ate both. Okay. Now, the number who ate ice cream... I could introduce another variable for that. You know, uh, we could call it i, but we know that uh, i to c is the same as three to two. So three times c is the same as two times i. This is how it works when you have ratios. Okay, so you know, if I wanted i, I could just say it's three halves of c. So I don't really need another variable i. Uh, what could we do? Well. The number of people who ate at least one dessert is the number of people who ate cake plus the number of people who ate ice cream, but included in both of these is the, the Bs, the, the people who ate both, and they're being counted twice, so we subtract off B. This is what's called the principle of inclusion and exclusion. Okay, uh, now, what can we do? Well, I can replace that i with a 3c over 2, and say 5c over 2 minus b. Um, what to do, what to do, what to do? 
Now, the number of people who ate at least one dessert, I want to make this, uh, this can't be more than 120, but I'd really like it to be 120. And I want to make B as big as possible. That's the goal. Make B as big as possible. I'm wondering if we could sort of assume that B and C are equal. Would that work? Obviously, B has to be less than or equal to C. Because if you ate both cake and ice cream, then you had to have eaten cake. So um, that's true. So could we say B is equal to C? And if we can, what's that going to do for us? Well, that bumps this back down to 3C over 2. And if I want to make B as big as possible, now I just need to make C as big as possible. And the biggest that could possibly be would be if all 120 people had... Uh, I guess it's ice cream in this case. Uh, but if 120 people was 3C over 2, if all 120 people had at least one dessert. So this would make 240 over 3C, and that would be 80. And that would make B 80. Okay. Now, is there a way to have more people have cake and ice cream? That I could look at the answers, and if 80 is one of them and it's the biggest, then I know I've got the right answer. But can I reason this out any better? Okay. I I sort of I can't get a bigger value for B than than C. C is sort of the cap. Okay? Cuz C is the smaller of the two numbers, ice cream and cake. And unless no one had anything, I can actually guarantee you that uh well, actually, we'll just say less than I, which is 3C over 2. Okay? But B is made bigger when C is made bigger, and the biggest C could ever be, well, what's, what's bigger? 120 has to be bigger than the ice cream amount. That's guaranteed. So C is as big as possible if we actually have equality here, and that would make C 80. So the biggest C could ever be is 80. That's the biggest it could ever be, and the biggest B could ever be is C, and that would make uh, it the biggest B possible. And so what would we have? Ice cream is 120, cake is 80, and we've got B is 80, people having both. That works out fine. I don't see any reason for that not to be the case. And 80 is the biggest possibility, so we are looking at an answer of D. But I didn't want to just say, well, by process of elimination, because, you know, I like occasionally practicing and making sure my reasoning skills are sharp. But that does question number 21. We've had 80 for about a minute or two now, but I wanted to confirm it for myself. It's a little sanity check. Anyways, question 21, all squared away with, kind of making me a little hungry. Um, so, you know, I might go get a snack before I start question at 22, and I will see you for that in the next video. I'd love a piece of cake right now.